Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome back to 10,000 and Below. This is where I'm talking about some pretty bad games. Ranked on Board Game Geek really low and sometimes though we'll find something that's interesting or a gem or who knows what we'll find. Let's take a look. Starting today with 17,601 Schaaf Schnappen. Another Monopoly, Elvis Presley. There's Ergo. I reviewed that eight years ago. I don't know what this one is. A Granny Z Grusem. Jump into the unknown. Jump and Unita. And a Monopoly free parking mini game. <laughs> okay. So let's go through these first. Shave Schnapp, and this is from 2000. That's from Michael Schott. Michael Schott makes some good games. You're just rolling dice and collecting tokens. Wow, there is not a lot to this game. That looks like all it is is you roll dice, collect tokens. Those don't look like great components, right? Just some dice and tokens. Ergo, I play, therefore I am. This is a logical card game made for the geek in us. This is, if I remember correctly, it's too much logic. Like, uh, I like logic, but there was just too much going on in the game itself. You know, if this is true, then this is true, and you have to prove it. And, I mean, look at all that symbology. On in some instances, I sit there and go, ooh, look at all that symbology. But at the end of the day, it has to also make a good game, which this one did not. Uh, this one here is Simulates Living in Poland, a scene by satiric cartoonist... And that's his name. You're trying to figure out what you're going to do in life. you got to collect money and resources. Hmm. It's all in black and white. Oh, well. Yeah, it doesn't look that great. Jump into the Unknown. This came out in 1999 from the Evil Polish Brothers. Well, part of this is... Oh, that's a terrible cover. Oh, my word, that's... Yeah, I don't like that cover at all. Wow, bad font. Picture's not that great. Board. Dominate the galaxy. Yeah, it looks like a typical, hey, rule over everybody else, a fighting type game. Unita. This is from Helvetia Games. Now, I was really excited when I first saw this one. I remember this one very much. It has these, all these dice in. And you are taking dice and moving them in these concentric rings, trying to get to the middle. But it is convoluted. And while the dice are cool, the rest of the components, this company does not make some really weird games. And this game is just not fun. You, you, you pick dice and there's not a lot of choices. It looked cooler than it actually was. Monopoly free parking minigame, a wobbly board, and you're placing taxis, and to get rid of your taxis, this is a dexterity game? That's the whole game? That's hilarious. When did this come out? 2009? I would actually put this in the Dice Tower Library. <laughs> Have my Monopoly section. All right, what else we got? Stranger Things, the Ego card game. Didn't, didn't uh, Prosper Hall make that one? I don't know. We'll see in a second. Monopoly Transformers. Here's a game just called Weed. Kakalakak. Touche has a lot of votes. And Sword and Skull. Huh. Well... We made it through the first 20. Let's see what we got here. Stranger Things. This is Hasbro. Never mind. You draw ego cards and... Oh, it's just like a Uno style game with round cards. This is... If I had my cash... Grab my cash gun right now, I'd shoot it up in the air. This is cash grab a la mode. We. This is from Keeper Games. I remember seeing this game. It actually came, at least the version that I got, I think they sent this to me. It came in a, a bag, too. Watch out for Potzilla. Ugh, this game deserves to be ranked low. Kakalaka. So this is based on the very, very popular Cockroach game where it runs around, except this one doesn't have that cool little bug. This is like a 
wow, this is like a little card game version of the same. The, the other game had a little electronic bugs rolling around. You're rolling dice, moving stuff. This looks like the same thing, but without the cool components. That's the whole point of the game. Touche, 1979. Huh. And you gotta claim patterns. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, this is this almost Wow. Two decks of cards. Looks like a classically old game that's ranked really low. Sword and Skull from Mike Elliott. Huh. I didn't realize that Mike was the one who had designed this one. Sword and Skull was when Hasbro or Av owned Avalon Hill was putting out all these games. This is one I never did end up playing. Uh, I played a lot of their new games that came out and from Avalon Hill. And this one was one of the last ones to come out in this line. And this one just got walloped critically. I remember everyone talking, just saying really negative things about it. So, yeah, too bad. I probably won't play it for that reason. It says it's more like Monot Talisman. Yeah, no thank you. All right, well, here's a game I've actually given a good review to. Shootout. Candyland Castle. Temple Run Speed Sprint card game. Let's see what else we can find here. Angry Dice. That looks like it's from Dice Hate Me. He must have made a game. I think I remember seeing that one. I want to look at this Tetris Tower 3D. What else we got in here? Fredericus. I gave that one a six. Hey, now, you're a Moonstar. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll look at Moonstar. Has 80 rating headbands for kids and stratagems. We probably won't take a look at the Adams Family reunion game. <laughs> All right, here we go. Shootout. Now, this, if I remember correctly, is a magazine game. Yep, it was in Games Unplugged in 2002. That's right. And then it was released as part of the Going Cardboard board game documentary. If you back that or bought it, you got this game. And so you're just playing a card, and you're trying to pick, you're trying to get as close as you can before you finally shoot. It's a silly little game, but I was impressed. It offered some nice little choices. A 20-sided die. You had these bullets to shoot back and forth. I found it entertaining. Seven might be high now. I don't know. But I was ranking it for what it was. If you were going to go buy this, I'd probably say six. Candyland Castle. This is for very little kids. And you need to find simple shapes and color matching but like with all these games there's literally no choice you're just matching the shapes together has a cool machine but there's no game so even for little kids i want them to have some choices temple runs speed sprint game did i never review this i thought i played it reviewed it huh maybe i never played this one i must have played a different one right left jump slide invisibility invincibility This is, I'm sure, another cash grab of a game. Oh, there's an electronic aspect to it. Angry Dice. Yes, this is from Dice Hate Me Studio. A real-time dice microgame. Beat a first of six by rolling your dice in ascending order pairs. You have two dice. You can lock a die. I felt like I played this at some point. Like at a con or something. I like the dice that are angry. That's kind of a weird side to be angry on. What is that? The four? No, it's the three. Maybe it's a three because of eye, eye, mouth. Well, this isn't really a game. It just came out around the same time as other stuff. Tetris Tower 3D. That looks cool, doesn't it? That looks like a fun way to play it. The pieces, very plasticky. How big is this, I wonder? Yeah, this looks cool. It must not be that great of a game. But it looks neat. It looks like you can drop them in. I don't know how you get rid of a row, though. Hmm. Fredericus. Wow, it's been a long time since I've taken a look at this one. You're a falconeer. Catch as many mythological beasts as possible. 
It's abstract, I know that. And other than that, I don't remember. I would not have played the game based on that cover, that's for sure. Whew. Moonstar. Oh, this re-implements re -implements Corona. Speaking of Corona, how many, how many negative reviews do you think it has now? Do you think some people have ranked it low? Let's see if anyone has done that just to be silly. Yep, there's someone already. Just one person. Okay. And they ran it at a 10? <laughs> okay. Anyhow. Uh, Corona's a puzzle-style game, so it was re-implemented by Moonstar. Wow, this is the re-implementation of it? Well, 1981. But wow, that is not a good cover. Not a good board. Not good pieces. Avalon Hill, huh? Headbands for kids. Lots of people have played headbands where you put something on your head and then you got to guess what it is. Um, I feel like I played this game, didn't I? I don't have a rating here. If I didn't play this with my kids, I let my kids play it without me and watch them do it. Headbands could work with kids anyway. It's just the categories of what's there. Stratagem, a 6.5. It's from Playroom Entertainment. You're making a grid of cards, and you're trying, it's a 3x3 three three grid, and you're trying to make the best cards in the grid. It's okay. You know, you're trying to put these cards out and stuff. It's, it's a little forgettable. It came out in 2004. I gave it a 6.5. I don't know what I would give it today, but yeah, it's okay. Maureen Hyron did it, though, and she has sold a gazillion card games in her life. All right, let's continue on here. Monopoly Clone Wars. Wow, there's so many Monopolies here at the bottom. eBay the card game. That's not the eBay card game I like. Caravans of Alderaan as only a five I've given it. That was 11 years ago. 60 Seconds to Save the World. I like the name of that one. The Dragon Riders of Pern. Pirate and Travel. That's from 1908. Family Feud from 1977 and Best of Tribond. Woo. And then there's Battleship, but that's not the Battleship we all know and love. I'm sure we'll find that one later. I don't think we've come across it yet. All right. Caravans of Alderaan. This is from Blind Luck Studios. You got to move around on this board. Get Monopolies. Oh, those are bad components. Yeah, I remember not liking it, but I don't remember why. But I can look at this and be like, nope. 60 seconds to save the world. This is from AEG. This is in their small little card line, I guess. This was before they switched over to only making the best of the best games. This one looks kind of cool. I don't know how the game works, but I like how it looks. Hmm, maybe we'll see this come back someday as a board game. Dragon Riders of Pern from 1983. This is from Mayfair. Oh, wow. This is kind of neat to look at these old games. Advanced and Solitaire games. Back before Solitaire games were cool. That's very time period artwork. This almost looks like the Dune boards and stuff like that from this time frame. So everyone can lose. This looks like an Avalon Hill game almost. Ooh, here's a page from the rule book. Oof. Interesting. Pirate and Trower from 1908. This helped people learn. It's a game of travel concluding with a pirate fight. So let's take a look at this. Pirate. Oh, wow. I wonder what the original one looked like. Because that's not the 1908 one there. That's kind of cool, though. Where is the original, original one? Oh, now we're getting closer. That's neat. That's neat to see these older games. Yeah. Endorsed by educators. Indispensable in the home circle. Rules in the box lid. Oh, I just get kind of caught up in these, looking at these old style games. That's neat. 
All right, Family Feud. Ba -dum -ba. Names, boys' names that start with an R. Robert is number one here, 51. Then Richard, Ronald, Raymond, Ralph, Randolph, Rodney, and Roger. Huh. And everyone's screaming and shouting. Strike indicator. I've played this game. I have definitely messed with this mechanism here. I remember this one because it's these plastic things that slide in and out and you put them in the board. I, I know I've seen this. It must have been at, when I was a kid at someone's house, but I know I've messed with it. That's kind of neat. It was re-implemented by the Family Feud DVD version. Which, did, so bad, it didn't even get a rating. The best of Tribond. So Tribond, something where there's a common link between three different things. What do these three things have in common? And then it's just, just a combination of those. People just don't like Tribon very much because all it is is it just gives you three things and you got to find the common thing, which is an interesting puzzle. I don't know if it's enough for a whole game. Richard Dreyfuss, Roy Scheider, Robert Shaw. They all start with R. I don't know. Wimbledon, 81, 83, and 84. Probably all won by the same person, I would guess. I don't know who. Taste Rose Best. These are different categories. I don't know what the question category is. Nah. Racket, shuttle. Oh. Shuttle, shuttle, shuttle. Shuttle's the top one. Because there's a, a shuttle and the racket and then a space shuttle and then that bus can shuttle you back and forth. Oh, I can see it upside down. There, sing, turning my computer upside down. There's singles. What? Oh, that's for the other side. <laughs> All right, we're getting too caught up in this. All right, let's move on. Battleship. This is not the battleship we all know and love. This is battleship of Battleship Hidden Threat, a card game version. Meh. All right, back to here. Sushi Roll got a five from me. There's Outburst Jr. We're definitely coming across games now that we might have heard. Pictionary Bible, which I gave a three to. Monsters and Maidens. Sneeze. King's Vineyard. Abracadabra. Bad Babies. Yeah, that's a pretty bad looking game. Peasant Buffet. What? That's a weird name. Redekai. Oh, wow. Wow. And Don't Be a Dork, the ultimate party adventure game. Feels like something my sister may have said to me. Don't be a dork. Sushi Roll is you just roll dice and try to complete orders and stuff. It just doesn't compare to the other sushi style games that are out there. Just because you roll dice and then collect cards, that's not a good enough game. Outburst Jr., is exactly what it sounds like. It's outburst for kids. Pictionary Bible. Yeah, I was very, very unhappy with this one because, first of all, it's just kind of a, ooh, ooh we're copying Pictionary, but now they're Bible terms, except these aren't all Bible terms. Like, alive and greet and festival and fishhook and Galilee. Technically, Galilee is in the Bible. And these words might have something to do with biblical themes, but they're no different than any other normal Pictionary. Just play Pictionary. <laughs> Monsters and Maidens. That's some very unique art where these people's, like, her legs are huge compared to her torso. But then these goblin guys she's fighting after the torso and with, like, two tiny legs sticking off the bottom. This person does not like to draw feet. <laughs> Alrighty. This was a clever mojo game powered by Game Salute. Oh, it's by Fred McKinsey, one of the designers of Alien Frontiers. Look, I never played this, so I don't know if it's any good or not. But it does not have a lot of good ratings in 2014. I 
A filler dice thing. Nah. Sneeze. Oh, this is from uh, Cambridge Games Factory, who many people know because they originally made Glory to Rome. Sneeze is not one of those games that was Glory to Rome. I feel like I played Sneeze, didn't I? I played most of these games. Yeah, I remember I gave it a four. Yeah, I remember playing with the tissues and stuff. It's just kind of a take that style game. King's Vineyard. This is from Mayday Games. And I remember the first time I played this, I thought, well, that was pleasant, but where was the game? I still feel that way. You don't have a lot of options in, in this, but it is a very pretty looking game. Abracadabra. This is from uh, DV Jochi Games. And it was not a very good card game. I think it to say different things to make stuff happen. All right, come on. Peasant Buffet. I want to know what this is about. Is it about a buffet of peasants? Horrible monsters are eating. And yes, you are a peasant trying to avoid the monster. So it's a buffet for the bad guys. Hmm. Not a huge fan of this art. Looks like another take that style game. Then we have Redekai. Man, I really thought Redekai would be a bigger. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a great game, but this was a game that used clear cards, and you can see from here. And then, so you had these monsters, and then you would upgrade the monsters by putting monsters on top of other you know other things to upgrade them. I thought it was a pretty neat idea and it worked well for kids. I didn't have this portable reader type thing. Do I have Redekai rate it? Eh, 5.5. It wasn't a great game. I'm just surprised it's rated so low, but it did not do too hot. Don't be a dork, the ultimate party adventure game. Um the ultimate party game is a unique and interactive experience that uses intellect, the absurd, and improvisational, improvisational, improvisational comedy to humorously reduce everyone, no matter what their social standing, to a dork. So apparently being a dork is, oh, look at that terrible board. You're a dork. Dork card in one ear and out the other. Is this game making fun of dorks or? Ah, my word. What? Come on now. Game's a piece of trash looking. Alrighty, well. Yay! But hey, maybe there were some interesting games that went by that you would like to talk about. Mention those in the comments. They were going to keep getting worse, and we're coming across more and more games that I'm recognizing the names of to be ranked this low. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassal. Thanks so much for watching 10,000 and below. See you next time.